So yeah, basically these are some of the approaches. There are more. And then there is this discriminative based or the contrastive learning based approaches. So, so let's see what is this contrastive learning? What do we mean by it? So the idea is pretty simple. So if you have an image and you take two different views of the same image and then uh, the representations are generated for that image, then since they come from the same image, both these representations should be close to each other. And on the contrary, if you take uh, a view of another image, say a chair and a view of uh, another image, say dog, then the representations learned for this uh, view of two different image, they should be far apart. They should not be close. So that's the idea of contrastive learning. Now, these two, uh, uh, two views of uh, same image, you know, two different augmentation of the same image, they form the positive pair and the uh, one view of one image and another view of another image, they form the negative pair. So the positive pairs here, these two, and these two, they will attract and the negative pair that will repel. So I think it will be easily understood by this uh, animation from this blog. So after encoding, it's passed through another uh, MLP projection head and then the projections are then compared and they are, you know, learned in such a way that uh, these different views from same image will, will attract and uh, different views from different images, they will repel. So that's the idea of contrastive learning. And this was presented in this paper, SimCLR. Now, you know, different augmentations can be taken. In this paper, they have mentioned that random cropping and random color distortion, they were uh, giving kind of the best result. Then uh, the SimCLR version 2 was released, which is now the state of the art, like uh, in, in case of the ImageNet top one accuracy. So here the network was obviously bigger. The ResNet size was bigger, not only wider, it was bigger in, in depth as well. And then they follow this three step. And also, you know, the projection had the MLP projection had uh, the SimCLR version 2 has more number of layers. So they follow this three step of uh, learning. So first they will do a unsupervised uh, pre-training in a task independent way. And then they do a supervised fine tuning uh, on the small amount of label data set. And once fine tuned, then they again do a self training on the unlabeled data uh, in a task specific way. So depending on the what, depending on what a downstream task they want to solve for it. So this, that was the idea of contrastive learning. And then uh, based on those ideas, then there are other papers. So for me, like I did not read all the paper. I have just read the same CLR, but I found this blog, which draws a, a comparison between these uh, three papers. And I'll just uh, quickly say the idea you can further read his blog or read the paper itself and maybe in later videos we'll discuss this in depth when I when I get uh, when I read it so the idea is pretty simple as we understood so we'll have an uh, image we'll take two different views and then we'll get their vectors from the network so this can be called as encoder network now both are same here and then you get the projections and then you uh, do the contrastive lo loss like uh, uh, pulling the uh, same view images uh, pulling the two different views of same images and pushing the two different views of different images. So here the two crops of this dog images would form the positive pair and a crop from a dog and a crop from a uh, chair would form the negative. Now, since it also has to generate a lo lot of negative samples, uh, the mini bed size that it use is quite large. Now here in the momentum contrastive learning, they reduce the size of, uh, they reduce the batch size in mini batch by using the projections from the previous mini batches uh, for uh, getting this negative uh, negative example so for say example for the getting the positive pair they can have the uh, you know two views uh, two views of the uh, image x and for negative pairs they can use the projections from the memory bank now here we have the encoder network and here we have this uh, momentum network momentum encoder network and then this is bootstrap your own latent here again it does not uh, you know it does not even has memory bank it does not uh, uses any negative pair so what it does is it will take um, two views of the same images and then there is a additional uh, mlp projection network here q theta which tries to predict the projection p of the view v bar so here the idea is that uh, the representations will be learned in such a way that it will be able to even learn, you know, the uh, representation of the other view. So it was like the neural scene representation that we that we saw earlier and it tries to make this P 
which is the uh, projection of uh, these another view v bar and the actual projection z bar equal so that's the idea uh, so this is another paper from facebook called swab or swapping assignments between multiple views of the same image and they have this interesting uh, key concept here of online clustering multi-crop augmentation and swap prediction so what is happening here so if you see this is the normal uh, const contrastive learning approach where the contrastive learning is applied to instances so we have a x we have two views and then we generate the features and then we you know do the contrastive comparison but in swab what happens a uh, first a code is obtained by assigning the generated features to a prototype or prototype can be considered as a, uh, a cluster that uh, represents yeah, a, a vector or set of vector that represents that entire class or that set of images. So basically what is happening is it's generating this code uh, queue by assigning these features to the cluster. Or you can imagine that uh, instead of doing learning between the instances, they are doing between kind of clusters. And then they, after the code queue is generated, then they solve the problem of soft prediction where the code which is obtained from one data, say x1, is predicted uh, using the another view x2 and vice versa so as they say swap does not directly compare image uh, swap does not directly compare image features uh, rather than it does through this code generated generated code and they also introduced uh, this multi crop augmentation where if you see in the uh, normal sim clr so uh, two crops were two v two different views of this uh, were generated of the image here they do uh, create a multi crop augmentation they will create multiple crops rather than just having the two crops okay so this was uh, this is another paper and then uh, as this is from the papers with code website uh, right now simply sim Sierra version 2 is uh, ranked 1 top 1 accuracy and boyl is second which is 0.2% less uh, less less metric and then beside images then there are uh, representation learning unsupervised representation learning applied to video as well and one such proxy task that uh, that is is shuffle and learn so here the network is tasked to uh, uh, identify the correct temporal order so if you see this is a video of a player throwing the baseball so if you give this one two three they are in correct temporal order so this will form the positive sample and if you give frame uh, say uh, frame three and then frame one and then frame uh, five then they are not in correct order and it will be a negative example so this is the exam some example of positive and negative tuples and this is the network which uh, does which predicts the correct incorrect tuple and this is the generation from the nearest neighbor and this is the generated nearest neighbor so this is the query frame and this is the image net free train this is the shuffle and learn free trained and this is the random so you can see that shuffle and learn is learning uh, good features and this is uh, the metric that they uh, computed on the action recognition and as we can see the shuffle and learn is doing better than the randomly initialized network and then another task is learning the error of time that is the task is to predict if video is playing forward or backward so positive training sample would be video clips playing forward and negative training samples would be video clips playing backwards so the, the idea is that it will learn strong cues about the uh, task and about the nature and uh, the semantic of the nature or the, the images of the videos for example uh, this is one example given here so suppose uh, if the we know that you know as per the uh, uh, gender as per you know the gravity or the physics the waterfall should fall from top to down so if that is not happening uh, and through this task of predicting the error of time the network will understand that you know the waterfall should fall from top to down and not from down to top like you know it should be in the forward so this all task you know will enable the network to learn the semantics uh, and even the physics of the real world then uh, there is another task of doing video colorization just like image you do colorization to the videos and then there is an interesting one uh, that was again in the seven slide so from videos with sound so we the task is basically audio visual co-supervision 
So use vision and sound to learn from each other. So there could be two types of prox proxy tasks. One is to predict audio visual correspondence. So the given audio corresponds to the given visuals or not. And other is to predict the sync, whether the audio and visual are sync. So let's see the first task. So this is the drum and this is the sound of the drum. So maybe I'll take this example. So yeah, so if this is the drum and this is the audio of the drum, so this image and this audio will form the positive uh, positive samples. And then this audio of drum and visual of guitar, it would form a negative sample. And yeah, they'll be passed to two different network, visual and audio network. And they'll, then they'll check again whether the visual corresponds to the audio or not. Okay, and the idea is that if uh, the audio and visuals are from the same places, then they are positive and the distance should be small. And if audio and visuals are from different videos, they should be negative and the distance should be large. Now this learns, uh, obviously using this correspondence, they also learn good visual and audio features. And then one application, interesting application is to learn to localize objects that sound. For example, uh, the input would be audio and video frame and the output would be to localize uh, which which instrument is playing this. So if the uh, image is this and the sound is of keyboard, then the keyboard will get localized. And then this is another example, uh, another application of this query on image retrieve on audio. You give a uh, image of a guy playing guitar and then it will retrieve the audio or the audio clips of different guitar, guitar, guitar audios. Yeah. And then the another task is to predict audio visual sync, use faces and voice to learn whether the audio and uh, the images or the visual here of the faces or the lips they sync or not. Now, this is another category of self-supervised learning called energy based models. Now, I haven't uh, I, I haven't dis uh, explored this much. I just watch one lecture of Jan Lacun. This is also interesting, but I don't know much about it. So the idea here basically is that uh, given uh, given an event, if you want to predict future, there could be so many possible futures. And if you just use a deterministic predictor, it will kind of predict the average of all the future prediction and it will be a blurry prediction. So here they use energy based models where they have the observation and they have this latent variables which can take multiple predictions. And then they have this uh, prediction manifold. And the idea is uh, the the output which basically corresponds to the input there I think this energy is going to be low as uh, I think uh, predicted as seen from here so I think this blue one is the data many and this purple one is the data manifold and this darker region is the low energy means the it's y is a good prediction of x and then a brighter one it means it's going away it's uh, not a good prediction so this is an interesting method i need to further explore it but yeah this is one thing that uh, anyone uh, if you are not aware that this also uh, you can explore like by yourself so yeah those were a quick overview so uh, as again i i i also further need to learn about it and i will do that and uh, in the subsequent videos first of all i think i'll take up this paper of rotation net i'll discuss it and maybe try to implement it and then uh, do a contrastive learning, basically SimCLR, and then try out a generative approach as well. And then eventually maybe the other. So yeah, so in the uh, next part, uh, we will try to, uh, I, I will try to understand this rotation at paper and we'll see what the idea is about. So although we know the idea, if there are any more informations, and then we'll implement the same for a custom data set. So till then, uh, keep learning and keep exploring neurons. Take care, be safe.